Some studies will tell you that Boston has the worst rush hour traffic in the nation, and anyone who sits in it every day would find it hard to disagree with that. The Boston Globe Spotlight team launched a new series this week on just how bad the situation is. It's called Seeing Red, a three-part series out this week. And joining us now is Andrew Ryan. Thank you so much for coming on. We appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. Happy well, to be here. One of the members of the Spotlight team that worked on this story. Uh, I should start by asking you how you got to this interview today. Uh, so <laughs> that, that's a very good question. So I took the red line to Harvard Square, and then I took the 86 bus across. And where did that, did that drop you right near? We're on Soldiers Field Road for anyone who doesn't know where W. So it actually drops you off uh, on, on the back side, so I kind of wander around. And I should it. say, you were on time. You were on time for this interview. I was, though <laughs> I, I gave myself some wiggle room. <laughs> you were praying along the way. Yes. Why is our traffic so bad? Our traffic is so bad, I mean, it's gotten much worse because when you look at the numbers, it's clear. I mean, there's 300,000 more uh, cars and trucks registered in Greater Boston than there were just five years ago. Mm. Uh, I mean, part of this is a good thing, right? The economy is, is revving higher. There's more jobs concentrating in the urban core. So what that means is there's more people trying to get to the same places to go to work. Uh, the census found that in the last five years alone, there are 59,000 more people driving to work by themselves. Wow. I think so many people, when they're sitting in traffic, they say, well, it's, it's probably because the public transportation is so bad. In your investigation, what did you find about the role of how bad the MBTA is and why that drives people into their cars? No question. That is, that is a huge part of this. And when you, when you look at the data, uh, the commuter rail uh, ridership has gone up, but both subway and bus ridership has gone down. I mean, we all remember the red line derailment earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, part of it is a PR problem, but there's also a part of it that you can't get here from there. Um, and the two things really need to work together. What about ride sharing? Because I think a lot of people intuitively would believe ride sharing would help because you're sharing a ride. Mm -hmm. And yet the data shows, no, this adds to the problem of traffic. How does that happen? There's no question. I mean, we actually, today's story uh, that uh, was written by Nicole Dunka, one of my colleagues, um, I mean, we looked at what we call the convenience culture, that, that we have so much now at the tip of our fingertips because of smartphones, mm. whether that's Uber and Lyft rides, whether that is, you know, Amazon packages or, you know, meals through DoorDash. But that adds a ton of congestion. Um, and, you know, we found that, like, for example, we found that the most ticketed vehicle in, in the city of Boston in the last four years was a UPS truck that had over 1,500 tickets. We spent a day following that truck. And over the course of a seven-hour shift, it was parked illegally five hours. Wow. And, of course, every time it's parked illegally, cars can't get through that part. Correct. I mean, it could be slowing traffic. It could be blocking traffic. But it's just – and the, tip, the, the parking tickets are just part of the cost of doing business because everybody wants everything right away. And it's something that, obviously – we're all guilty of. We all, I mean, instant gratification is a very powerful thing. You, as part of the series, looked at some solutions that other cities, even some foreign cities, have tried to handle this issue. What did you find with that, and what are some solutions that maybe we can apply here? Correct. So we, we did a lot of travel for this series. We looked at things in, in London and Stockholm and outside Washington, D.C., and and, as far, and even in Arizona. Um, I mean, so on the more aggressive side, places like London and Stockholm, uh, more than a decade ago, they uh, started what they call, you know, congestion pricing, where they actually charge people to charge people to drive into kind of the urban core uh, during the workday. Um, and other places, I mean, there's, there's a lot of different variations of this. New York has approved it, and it's supposed to go into effect soon. What London found, they put it in, in place in 2003, and there was an immediate drop in traffic. And so then they took that extra road space and they added bike lanes, they added more bus lanes, and they created more space for people. But there are things that are being done, both large and small, that are having an impact in places. Congestion pricing is controversial just by its nature. You're charging people to come into the city. Has Boston looked into that seriously in any way? There hasn't really been a serious look, no. Um, and congestion pricing can mean many different things. Uh, it can mean, uh, you know, just more tolls. It could mean charging people higher rates during peak rush hour. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of smaller versions of it that a lot of cities, even in this country, do. Andrew Ryan with the Boston Globe Spotlight team. The series is called Seeing Red. You can find it now on the Boston Globe website. Thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Absolutely happy to be here.